Hey, it's March 21st, 2023. Tried to start a video a few moments ago and I was rudely interrupted, so this is part two of that episode that was just about 10 minutes long. I'm not sure how I shut the phone off. But anyway, we're up here on the third floor and uh, having an exciting day. Um, we need we need more light, don't we? How can I fix this situation? Hold on. Okay, well, maybe that'll do it. Let's reposition everything. What's in this box? What? I'm still unpacking stuff, man, from last April. Oh, this is a bunch of TV guides, man, in that box. Maybe that'll be interesting to look at. I was just looking for an HDMI cable. Well, um, because I have this Roku, I was wanting to hook up to this TV back here. Um, it's, uh, you wind up finding all kinds of stuff around here. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Not so fast, ladies and gentlemen. I should have set this up better. Uh, <laughs> oh, what a pain in the butt. Okay. Maybe this is better. coming in from behind that's maybe that all right how's this angle <clears throat> okay I've been watching a lot of the 1966 Marvel superheroes cartoon um, I've been uh, watching it on archive.org and so um, it's inspired me to go through and make an inventory of exactly which issues of Tales of Suspense and Tales to Astonish I own, because a lot of the stories that are adapted in that cartoon come from uh, 1965-64 issues of the comic. Uh, so I think this box will have some... starts with Superman, so this is probably the box that's going to have... Tales of Suspense would be first, and then Tales to Astonish. And of course, uh, I've shown you all these before. This is uh, the earlier Supermans are in another box. Uh, but it's good. Uh, I like to go through and from time to time and see what exactly I own. Because you, you oh, that light's not even directed at me. That's the problem. Oh.
Do you hear that cracking when I stand up? Oh, maybe that's better. <laughs> oh, yes. Now I've got two copies of that issue, apparently. doing to Superman. Unbelievable. See? For those of you that like Henry Cavill, see, Superman does not have a bunch of hair on his chest. That's proof. Um, Superman starts to change the look of the comic as the 70s approach. up high man uh, let's see if I can't put this down lower uh oh Lois Lane is going to hell Ooh, this is a very low grade copy of this, so I could certainly stand to uh, um, get a better copy of that. <sighs> yeah, see, Superman, uh, DC Comics raised their price to 25 cents, and uh, so did Marvel there for a little bit, and, but then Marvel. Um, they, they were 15 cents, and then they both uh, went up to 25 cents. Marvel, just for a few months. DC stuck with it a little bit longer, and uh, then they, Marvel, and then DC following went to 20 cents. Um, so. They knew they had to raise the price. They thought, well, we'll just raise it to a quarter. That'll make it easy, um, and uh, we'll add extra pages. It just didn't work, because a quarter was a lot of money for kids. Uh, you know, a lot of kids got, a, like, a dollar allowance for a month, you know. Money had a different value then. It was worth a lot more. Um, this is one of the first comics I ever bought. This is not that particular copy. This is not a high-grade copy, but I, I remember buying this in Heidelberg at the PX. Uh, well, there was a little bookstore. Let's see this. Uh, it's like this. It's very beautiful. That would make a good poster. Um, so this one is... Uh, Superman 252. And then I have a Giant Superman Annual. Look at that. that. That is just so great. I even have him as Alfred E. Newman. Um, I didn't pay $30 for that. It's um, I think it was half that at Duncanville Books. Another great uh, book. This is Superman Annual number uh, five. And here's number six. I've got another copy of this that's in, where is it? I think that doesn't have the, that the cover is, uh, has the title cut off. Um, okay, then we get into Lois Lane comics. Which I love. Issue 14. Issue 16. I wish I had more of these. Here's 23. Um, comics, you know, were 10 cents since the 30s. Um, 
Then, with issue 25, you see there's a problem. So still 10 cents. Uh-oh, that means that the price is going up. What? How much is it going to go up to? That's 25. 27, it has 10 cents in very big numbers there. 29, you got the 10 cents much bigger than, than it has been for a long, you know. Why is 10 cents so big? That was uh, 29. <laughs> wow. And I don't have another one until 51. I, it sounds like I need to get more Lois Lanes. I don't know what's wrong with me. But anyway, obviously the price went up to 12 cents. Now, what, what I understand is that uh, when comics went to 12 cents, the sales dropped significantly, like by half. Little boys weren't going to pay 12 cents for a comic. But the only comic that didn't have its sales drop tremendously like a roller coaster was Lois Lane and some other comics. I think the Archie comics, maybe. Uh, because girls didn't mind paying the extra two cents. Guys apparently did. There's another copy of that same issue. So I've told you that story before in another copy of that same issue because it's such a great cover, you know, with his three great um, um, girlfriends. So, huh. so they uh, each died after I married her. I've lost them forever. So it's Lois Superman, Lana Superman, and Lori Superman. They didn't take the name Kent. They took the last name Superman. I mean, his real last name is L. Uh, as in Elohim, you know, it's a religious thing. That's why all the, uh, his girlfriends and his main villain, Lex Luthor, all, you know, have the LL. Um, it's uh, something that uh, Siegel and Schuster brought in from their, uh, their um, studies. In the Bible. the The artwork in these Lois Lane comics is just fantastic. From Kurt Schaffenberger, he's got a a, a great. There, there's something about his style that's a little. It has a little bit of humor or whimsy to it, like Marie Severin has uh, in her art, and uh, Ramona Fredone. So that's another copy of the same issue. Something I really love. It's just, um, it's something that C.C. Beck had, too, in, in his um, Captain Marvel comics. And then we get into the Go-Go Check era, number 64. Another, another 64. 95 is a giant one. <laughs> that... No, Superman, don't look at me. I've become an ugly freak. Yes, indeed. This one, uh, 70, I think is... Um, is it the first Silver Age Catwoman, or is it the first time Catwoman's drawn to look somewhat like she looks in the TV series? Um... So one or the other, perhaps perhaps both. You know, this is definitely from the the Adam West TV show era when it was airing on ABC. Um, it's before Catwoman always had a skirt, so that's more of the made to look a little like the Julie Newmar costume. Here's number eighty three. You can see this is where DC starts to change its look, and. Uh, 93. I like the the earlier Lois Lanes. I mean, these are great, but uh, you see, everyone's drawn a little more realistically and less uh, in kind of a humorous way. Um, 
I'm going to throw a lot of devil stuff in these comics. You know, she's getting married to the devil. Earlier she was going to hell. 104. What is that telling us about Lois Lane? I don't know. This is a pretty sought-after issue where she um, um, becomes an African-American for a little while. Are you sure you want to go through with this, Lois? Yes, Superman. Close the body mold and switch on the power. It's important that I live the next 24 hours as a black woman. This is, uh, holding up comics is, uh, God darn it. <laughs> it, uh, it's almost like exercise. Um, number 121. Let's see, now they're going up in price again to 25 cents. Okay, then we've got Jimmy Olsen. See, the way I, I organize these is I have Superman, then I have the Superman angles, then I have Lois Lane. I don't put it in the L's. I put it right after Superman. Superman's girlfriend, so it's uh, G. Yeah, and then I have this. This would come after it because it's Superman's pal, and, and P comes after G. So that's that's how I organize them. Yeah, I, basically, I keep all my Superman books together in that way. Another copy of the same issue. 68. Yeah, there's a lot of devil stuff, man. 79. Whoa, that was 79? No, that's 70, man. I, I, I can't see worth a crap. This is 72. That's a great cover. Seventy four. You see, this comic has a lot of the insanity that was in the uh, Captain Marvel comics of the 1940s. It's the red-headed beetle of 1000 B.C. Demons from Pandora's Box. Another copy of the same issue. Oof. Number 87. Looks like I paid $5 at Half Price Books plus a discount that I got there. And then another Beatles cover. Balancer than the Beatles, more electrifying than Elvis. See Superman strut the Krypton crawl. Another copy of this great issue. 99. On archive.org, there is a show called Spook Show, and uh, the guy that put it together, I think he did about 150 episodes, and, and one of them, well, he says that he was inspired to do the show by a show called The Hypnotic Eye. The Hypnotic Eye was a show I worked on with my friend Joe Riley back in the early 90s for Dallas Public Access. It was... Uh, traded around the country on VHS and uh, became uh, became kind of legend well of legendary um, it was Joe Riley's Joe Riley said I hey, I want to make a, a TV show like your magazine the sophisticate and I said well fine so he made this great show with this puppet with who's who's uh, had a big giant eye like a cyclopean 
I and uh, um, anyway he, I think he made about 15 episodes I helped him with the first five or six maybe I, I did a puppet Donny Osmond and the second episode of the Hypnotic Eye was all my material that I had collected and all um, all and I, and I was in the editing bay with him at the public access studio and I said here put this tape on and he, he edited the thing exactly as I would have done it so episode two was actually my mine but everything else you know he put together on his own and uh, or with other people and so anyway it was legendary so it's inspired some guy to do 150 shows and I was um what and you can see them on I think archive.org has them and, and if you have Roku there are people that have channels uh, on Roku that show the hypnotic eye that uh, I mean I could I could direct you towards it if if you're really if you really care, um, but um, anyway, how did I get started? Uh, we were looking at issue ninety nine, and I, I noticed he had a, a show called uh, his episode ninety nine was. It starts with uh, the theme song to Get Smart, and he's got commercials with Barbara Feldon, different commercials she did for different products. So. So episode ninety nine, he focuses on, I guess, on the, the number nine. I I I've only seen a few episodes of his show. He has one that's all a Planet of the Apes show with nothing but Planet of the Apes trailers and commercials. And so I need to record some of that. I'd like to meet the guy or maybe bring him on and interview him because uh, that's kind of neat that this guy was influenced from wherever part of the country he lives in to spend that much time based on something that I worked on. I think we would get along. Okay, see how Jimmy Olsen, again, as the 70s approach, it starts to change its look. And that's kind of with, uh, you know, the, the Neil Adams era and everything starting to look more realistic. And, uh, and then, of course, Jack Kirby came over and took over Jimmy Olsen except they wouldn't they would redraw the face of Superman they didn't want uh, um, Jack Kirby to draw the face because they thought he did it a little off model you can see that here you can tell that that is not a Jack Kirby Superman face but everything else is obviously Kirby um, um, it's um, It's one of those things, you know, an older guy, you know, World War II era guy thinks of this word and they think homo superior, homogenous, they don't, and then they think, they don't think that, you know, if we put that, put this in a comic, the, the kids are just going to laugh. Um, oh, it has cool, cool old golden age reprints in the back. Um the Newsboy Legion. Um, yeah. When I was a kid, they don't do this anymore. I guess it was because it was a big deal that milk was homogenized, and they abbreviated it. And <laughs> they'd have big signs. You remember this in the supermarket in the 70s that would say, Homo milk, 49 cents, whatever milk cost back then. And that's how they would abbreviate homogenized milk. And, of course, to third and fourth graders, that that was funny. Actually, third and fourth grader, I don't think I even knew what that meant. Maybe later on I realized because, uh, yeah, I don't think I even really realized that that was a thing because I would watch... Hollywood Squares, you know, and Match Game, and Paul Lind. I just thought, this guy's really funny. I didn't really realize that Paul, what Paul Lind was, even though I watch it now, I realize he's making all these jokes that make it very clear. And Charles Nelson Riley, I mean, he was, I don't think people, did people even, because Charles Nelson Riley did all, it was hosted a, like a kid's show 
on Saturday morning. I don't, he was always the voices on kids, you know, cartoons, Charlotte's Web. I just don't think, uh, I don't think uh, people realized it. And I remember, you know, well, I don't remember, but before I was born, Liberace, all these women had a crush on him. They had no idea. People had just no idea about all that. Uh, it used to be something just, I guess, wasn't talked about. Where the heck am I? You're on the third floor. Okay, I, I've lost my place here. 137. Oh, here I am. This book, I got this for a couple of bucks. It's a it's a reproduction. Three-dimensional, three-dimension adventures of Superman. It's just a beautiful cover. Even though it's not real, it would look really good on a comic book wall, if I had a comic book wall, maybe I should make a comic book wall. What do you guys think? Should I be cool like everybody else and have a comic wall? What is this? There's just a, a cover in here with no comic. What kind of un-American communism is that? Okay, finally we're getting to the tales of suspense. Whoa! Okay. I guess the first one I have is number 65. Now, uh, I'll tell you something. If you were to put a picture of this cover on Instagram, they would take it down and they would send you a nasty little message. We have removed your picture because it promotes hate groups. Because... Uh, the Red Skull, who's clearly the bad guy who's being fought against, has the swastika on him. And because, um, man, what was that? What was that movie was uh, with Clint Eastwood? Man, what was that called? Was it called The Iger Sanction? Anyway, I put a poster up where uh, Clint Eastwood was fighting some Nazis on a ski lift, like cable, like a car that goes up to the mountains and it had a swastika on it and they removed that because it had the swastika on it and then I so that that's apparently and and that may be a reason that these Marvel superhero cartoons are never put on Disney Plus and they won't release them in any format is because back you know like there's a rocket with a swastika on it and and that's, but I mean, they're the bad guys. But you know, when they made the Captain America movie a few years ago, there were no swastikas because they uh, had the Red Skull instead was a splinter group from the Nazis. He was Hydra, so they had the Hydra symbol. So that way they could get around uh, the Red Skull um, and the swastika problem. Here's issue 71, what price victory. These comics are so much fun, man. Um, 72. I, I, I need to fill in blank spots. What is going on? This is all out of order. Okay, I have this. This is not related to Tales of Suspense. It is Marvel. I mean, it's... Um, Timely Atlas, you know, they had several names. But this is pre-code horror, suspense number 26. I don't have many pre-code horror comics. I wish I did, but I'm uh, just not rich. So that should go before. Yeah, these Tales of Suspenses are out of order. Yeah, because here's Tales of Suspense number 15. Another, uh, this is... Uh, a 10 cent comic. Uh, so I, I I have Suspense, which is not Tales. And then I have this Tales of Suspense. Okay, then what's going on with this? Oh, yeah, these are out of order. Okay, this is Tales of Suspense 54. With uh, part of the cover torn off. So this is an earlier one than the first one I showed you. Then, then there was that Red Skull one. Ooh. That was 54. Here's 
52. Look at that. It's the first Black Widow. This is um, this is a pretty significant book, uh, you know. So it's got a little bit of bins. I'll let you see the condition. You guys can tell me what you would rate this comic on a, you know, whatever grading scale. Because, um, you know, I don't have a lot of high dollar comics, but this would definitely be one of them. And I need to let my wife know in case something happens to me that, you know, that's something that's of some significance. Oh, and I have another one. This one looks to be in a little bit better shape. Um, so, 52. Of course, you know, I bought those before the movies came out, and I mean, she was always a significant character. She was always a the character that was dated almost every superhero in the Marvel Universe. 72, 73, did I show you this one? I don't know. I don't know why all that was out of order. That's disturbing. 74. Bitch. 77. Yeah, I think there was a cartoon. Yeah, there was a cartoon of this. Eddie won the return of the titanium man. Another copy of that. And uh, 86. Okay, so, amazing. That's that box. So, Tales of Suspense 93. Uh, this camera is resting on a bunch of these box these things. I'm gonna put some of these into the box. Okay, so then what happened um, is that this comic became Captain America and then Iron Man got his own title with issue one. The amazing thing about these comics, these split comics that are half Iron Man, half Captain America, or Tales to Astonish that's, you know, half whole cast Submariner, is they aren't collected, or they don't have the value that um, the comics do when they have their own uh, um, titles. I, I don't know why that is. Here's Tales to Astonish 46 with um, Ant-Man and the Wasp. So apparently Trump isn't arrested today. Here's uh, 50. I'm seeing some little uh, blurbs popping up the top of my phone there. That was, um, ah, looks like I have another copy of that issue. 50. Here's 53. So 
So I need 54. <laughs> I really need 55 because, you know, this one's... I have a, a bunch from the same collection. This is 55 where some kid drew all over the cover. <laughs> Inside is perfectly okay, but the covers are destroyed. Um, that was 55. Then I need 56, and then 57. They just did a wonderful job on these covers. But they were really cheap because of that. Then I need 58 and 59. Okay, so I'm not sure when Hulk started in Tales to Astonish. This is 62. That was 57. Somewhere between 57 and 62. Um, so this is a very early Hulk appearance. I mean, Hulk had his own comic for like six issues, or was it five or six issues? And then, uh, came back later in, in this, uh, comic. So initially, Hulk, this is, this also has, uh, it's not written on as badly as the others. It has a Charles Harris autograph. Um, this is, uh, 63. Here's another copy of 63. When I have my thumb over it, I'm hiding a price tag. <laughs> I guess you figured that out. 64. Yeah, this I this was animated, um, or, you know, and kind of animated. Uh, Sixty-four. Those cartoons are great. Okay, so um, sixty-five. Nothing like these books, man. Okay. And then here's another one of those written on, but I, at least I have upgraded, uh, I have an upgraded copy that I just showed you. 66, I always love this cover. Sixty-seven, that's just a really great image of him. That's great. Yeah. He has four toes. Notice that. That's that's my favorite Hulk. That's the Hulk that everybody has their own different Hulk that they think is the perfect Hulk. That to me is the perfect Hulk right about there. Um, Sixty-eight. So these uh, Hulk stories were adapted into the cartoon that you can see on archive.org. And uh, 69, still Hulk with Ant-Man. So that was 69. And then I, I think the Submariner showed up in issue 70. This is issue 71. Unless this is when he first appeared. I'm not sure. Oh, it's when Marvel was pop art productions. It was... Uh, Stan Lee was trying to cash in on uh, Roy Lichtenstein and Andy Warhol and all that. Um, that uh, oh, I have two copies of that issue. I wish I had one copy and one copy of issue 70. That would be even better. Here's issue 72. See, I was able to pick these up in the 80s um, when no one else was buying them. 73. Um, they were a lot more affordable. I wasn't able to afford Spider-Man comics, so I would buy these and uh, and Thor and Fantastic Four. I, those were affordable. Spider-Man has always been out of my price range. That was that 73. So I need 74. Here's 75. These Submariner stories are great. There's a great story where where he meets his grandmother, his human grandmother. 75. I'm missing 76. This is a great cover. 77. A great cover. So, 77. 
And here's another copy of 77 without a cover. So that I'm missing 78, 79, 80, and then 81 with some drawing on the cover. So those are issues I need to get. Um, I'm missing a lot. 82, 83, 84, and then I have 85. So I'm missing another three issues. I gotta get these issues, man. 86. Eighty-seven, then I'm missing eighty-eight, eighty-nine, here's ninety, ninety-four, and uh, in a few issues the Hulk will take over this comic. Here's 95. Go, 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 Hulk. He'll take over the comic and Submariner will get his own comic. He'll start with issue one in 1968. That's when all that expansion happened at Marvel. Okay, what was that? 96, 98. I've always loved this cover. 99. Let me know if you want me to show you how to get to these uh, cartoons on archive.org. I can show you how to do that. Uh, I can uh, show you how to get to the hypnotic eye or to that spook show thing that I was talking about. Okay, that's 99. This is 101. And then uh, with 102, it switched over, and uh, Hulk got his own comic. He's uh, like a Big Daddy Roth type uh, guy. That's Teen Titans. Man, I, I thought I had more 60s Teen Titans than this. Mad Mod. There's 19. Twenty-three. The new Wonder Girl is here. Thirty-four looking like a cover of House of Mystery or something. It's um for a while their horror took over all the comics, including the superheroes. I got two copies of that issue. And then, see, so still real horror looking. Then we move to Thor in uh, Journey into Mystery. The first one I've got is 98. Uh, but, um, I'll look at those later. Let's look at these. TV guides I just found. Oh, wow. Let's see. This is 1980. It's got Howard Cosell cover. I think in the last episode I showed you some 8 treks that I found an 8 trek. I'd actually uh, put together a compilation of Batman themes and I uh, and I actually burned one onto 8 track because um, I had a, an old 8 track recorder. There's Donnie and Marie. I wonder what year the 1977. Oh, here's the uh, CBS Saturday morning lineup. Uh, 
Let's see, Space Academy, uh, Batman, Tarzan Hour. And there's the ABC lineup. This must be um, right when the new season was starting. Yes, yeah, September 17th. And here's NBC. Okay. Beverly Archer. Oh, I just, you could just tell. Ugh. Obviously a Biden supporter. Yeah, oh, look at this. Uh, look at all the variation in games you can get with the Sears Pong player. <laughs> what year are we talking about here? Uh, oh, they're premiering The Grinch as Halloween night. We're... Um, October 30th, 1977. Look, a giant TV, now affordable from $1,500. Yes, indeed. How about that? Um, but these are the cool ones to get these fall preview issues. Interesting reading in TV Guide. Yeah, this is uh, September 8th, 1979. Yeah. I, I started recording old episodes of Saturday Night Live, and then I'd go through these TV guides and I'd cut out, damn, I wish I hadn't done that, the, the original listing from like the September, Saturday, September 8th, 1979 with whatever, you know, guests they had. Well, that was a really stupid move. But I did it years ago. And the older ones before Saturday Night Live premiered aren't going to have that stupid thing. Let's see if we're going to go. Well, we got a bunch of them together. Wow. Let's get these things in order. Meyer Greenblatt was just telling me that he's watching Roots. And here's, um, here's when Roots premiered on television. I didn't always smoke Winston Longs. <laughs> uh, yeah, there it is. Tonight, Roots. And Peter Frampton. Wow. I remember they, you know, gave us a lesson in sixth grade about all that. You know, I think the network must have sent to all the schools lesson plans on how to uh, prepare the kids for their experience. Ah, uh, look at this. It says den on it because... Um, my mom would always, I think, during this era, would buy two TV guides. One would be in the den where we watch television, and I guess one was for me to take to my room where I had a little television set that's actually in the other room. I'd go in there and show it to you, but the cats are sleeping in that room, and I'll scare them. It was uh, it's red, white, and blue because it was made in like i think july of 1976 so it was molded in red white and blue okay so here's a fall preview from uh what year is this did i just show you this one how oh, dirty harry is showing on nbc that's a great movie this is september of 1977 so this is the um this is just the few months after Star Wars came out. <sighs> yeah, Batman, Tarzan. Okay, so that's 77. And so let's see, what year was this one? I think I showed you this one. This one is 79. 77, 79. So what year is this one? There's always cigarette ads on the back. Um, uh, they're playing Magnum Force this this year. This is 78. 
in, in between. So they have all the new Saturday morning cartoons. But what's cool is to look what was not on the networks. There's the debut of Godzilla. The adventures of the friendly dragon Godzilla are shown along with those of Jan, a girl who was raised by jungle creatures. What I like to look is what's on the, the independent channels there. Uh, like at six, 7 in the morning, channel 39 is running Deputy Dog. That's... And, and, and then on the regular networks... CBS is uh, Popeye, but it's not it's not the vintage Popeye, it's new. Yogi Space Race is on NBC and ABC is Scooby Doo. I'd watch Deputy Dog. They have the Brady kids on at seven thirty re repeats of that. And it's and Fang Face is on ABC premiering. Uh, oh, this is when Fantastic Four started. Debut, three of the original Fantastic Four comic book characters, the stretchable Mr. Fantastic, his wife Sue, and the Thing, are joined by a new member, Herbie, Herbie the Computer. Right there. How about that? 78. Okay, so there's another fall preview issue. What is this going to be? I'm literally just unpacking this stuff from a box, you know. Okay, this is September 76, okay, so that's CBS's lineup, yeah, some shows I don't remember, Big John, Little John, who would watch, Land of the Lost was on, but those were repeats. No, it says brand new episodes from the Lost Land or Prehistoric Monsters. 76, there were new episodes, I guess. I guess the show went three three years. Here's Monster Squad. Uh, okay, 76. So, what will this one be? Probably 75, you think? Let's see. What is it going to be? No, this is pro this got to be 81. September 75. Oh, I see. This is from uh, when we lived in Tacoma, Washington. So they're premiering the Planet of the Apes show. Uh, I guess the second season of Land of the Lost. Uh, Secret Life of Waldo Kitty. Yeah, so this is, uh, wow. So what year is this going to be? I bet it's going to be 74. Watch. Yep. September 7th, 1974. This is, I was living in, in Texas then, in San Antonio. Adventures of Gilligan premiered Partridge Family 20. 2200 AD. Um, that's when Hong Kong Fooey started. You got your super friends. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kenny Rogers. <laughs> that's when Kenny Rogers didn't even have white hair. And, and he was alive, too. That's uh, quick picking and fun strumming. Oh, jeez. 74. <sighs> so what will this be? This is probably going to be the 80s. Ah, uh, this is 78. I think I... Oh, I see, I have two copies of this one. See, because like I said, my mom would buy two copies of, of them. So that's, that's the way it is. There's a Starsky and Hutch cover. Let's look for good covers.
I think this is an earlier issue, like when I was living in San Antonio in third or fourth grade. I'm thinking. April 5th, 1975. Yeah, that's right Right before we, we left from San Antonio. If I'm going to smoke, I'm going to do it right. Sitcom. There's a prison sitcom called On the Rocks. Here's a Jack Davis WKRP in Cincinnati cover. And this Walton's one. I wonder, some of these, maybe I'll find some from when I lived in Virginia, in Hampton, Virginia. This is August 24th, 1975. So that's not it. Yeah. Uh, the Jeffersons. UFOs on TV. June 1978. Is this about Project UFO? Or was that later? Yeah, I don't know. This could be older. Um, J July 28, 1975. Is this Texas or Seattle? Um, it always tells you. Uh, no, it's uh, this is Texas. Um, You know what? Oh, yeah. I miss my family. My uh, mother passed away in 2001, my father in 2006. My older brother, uh, my oldest brother, a couple of years after that. Here's a six million dollar man cover. And then I have one other brother, but um, I think he's living in San Antonio. I, he, uh, my wife and I changed our phone numbers. I sent him a text, this is my new phone number. We just adopted a dog, but then, uh, My wife had surgery and calls him up and and and, and uh, he, he was like I guess he responded with a text that was very uh, terse very kind of it's like angry that I had changed my number and hadn't told him and I had told him here's a Charles Adams cover so anyway he, he just I don't know he just flipped out and uh, as an talked to me in a cup uh, more than a couple years about five I don't know six years before the pandemic here's the Hulk cover so, see it ties the show together with the Hulk the comics that we were looking at earlier um, this is when Hulk premiered Remember, uh, July 1979 so now you know Battlestar Galactica. I am. So, um, I have friends on the internet, four color fossils. I look forward to every Wednesday night. And, and, and sometimes they'll call me and 
and people will send me these AOK -okay packages and I need to reciprocate. But people have sent me all these cool things in the mail and um, but um, you know we're here we moved to the other side of the country and we really don't know many people yet and uh, my wife's in pain like all the time she has to have surgery but can't have the surgery until she loses weight but can't lose weight until the pain stops so um, and um So, I just come on here, you know, as a desperate way to communicate with people out there. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. Um, maybe it's just a ridiculous show, I don't know. Um, I don't have the money to buy much new stuff to impress you. Uh, this is an older one, September 17th, 1974. Connie Stevens is the sex symbol. I guess she's supposed to be playing like a Marilyn Monroe type. Um, oh yeah, they made a they made a TV show out of Paper Moon. I remember that. Kojak. I think this Apple's Way was like a Walton's ripoff. Anyway, um, there's another Jack Davis, Welcome Back Cotter cover. Jack Davis must have made a ton of money. Okay, what else? Eight is enough. get all these books out of here then I can uh, shit. then I can uh, there's, that, that was folded in the box I didn't pack these that's uh, <laughs> Dukes of Hazard um, Robert Conrad and, and uh, Black Sheep Squadron which the first season was called Baba -Ba Black Sheep, and I guess they thought Black Sheep Squadron sounds a little more masculine. Uh, indeed. Okay, Lost in the Prairie. This show's entertaining someone out there. What video cassettes can mean to you? It meant that I spent like an hour freezing in the garage trying to bring them in uh, this uh, morning because I've got who knows how many hundreds of VHS cassettes. Okay, what is this garbage? I guess that's when Mary Tyler Moore was going off the air. Frank Sinatra in his first TV movie playing a detective. How about that? What is going on over here? Oh, here are the, the more uh, recent ones. Uh, like have a square bound cover but then they turn it into a magazine like size thing and it was never interesting to me anymore here's uh carrie fisher turns into natalie portman how about that oh here's some uh, digest archie comics that are here here's a little archie 
Christmas cover. I gotta get these downstairs. Now look, it's uh, Beretta. Let's see, there's a little house in the prairie. 1980. I hated it when, you know, one of the, the older sister lost her eyesight. But then that's what happened in real life. So it's like, what do you, ex you expect them to just change the what really happened? Okay, here's another fall preview, but it's from a square bound era, 1993. Which I guess was a long time ago. I, I, to me, 1993 is like yesterday. This feels like a brand new magazine. I, I, um, I just don't know where the years went, man. Um, oh, shit. I've got some real old ones here. That really frickin' sucks. <laughs> 